working. Are we live? Yes, definitely. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Chain Breakers. We are a Christian recovery program. We focus on the roads of recovery using the 12 steps. As you work and study the steps, you will begin to step into the future that God has planned for each one of you. We use various recovery materials, including the Bible, AA Big Book, NA Basic Text, Celebrate Recovery, and other relevant sources. We want to make it very clear this is not an AA or NA meeting, and we're not affiliated with either fellowship. Uh, we endorse them. They do not endorse us. Uh, we respect their uh, traditions. Our mission is very simple. Life changed through broken chains. We are called to change the world of recovery by bringing people to the knowledge of the true God that will set them free and break their chains of addiction. We know that when you get a revelation of who God is, it will cause a revolution in your life resulting in freedom. At Chainbreakers, we go from desperation to restoration through the 12 steps and the power of Jesus Christ. It's through his power that we have become chain breakers and we invite you to join us. Our message is hope, freedom, and a new life in Christ. Our promise is redemption, full restoration, and abundant recovery. We aim to help you build a life you don't need to escape from. We purpose to save the lost and disciple the saved through sponsorship, spiritual mentorship, 12-step recovery meetings, fellowship, and meaningful relationships with God and others as objectives to accomplish our mission. Our destiny is to help you reach yours. Welcome to the family. If you're not a Christian, please know you're wanted and welcome here. Um, you don't have to believe to belong. We're happy you're here. We're, you're welcome to come in and listen, um, and we're happy to have you here. We will pass the basket for donations to help pay for weekly expenses, including free literature and Bibles we give to patients when bringing our meeting into treatment centers for H&I. We encourage sponsorship. A sponsor is someone who will take you through the 12 steps. We also encourage you to get a list of phone numbers to help you build a support network. If you are willing and able to be a sponsor, would you please raise your hands and keep them up for a moment? Okay. See one of these people after the meeting. Uh, and get connected. Do we have any newcomers or visitors to the group for the first time that would like to introduce themselves? Go ahead in the back there. Uh, Mike, Mike, welcome, Mike. <laughs> Go ahead in the back. Hi, Sue, Sue, welcome, Sue. Go ahead and then we'll go here. Karen, welcome, Karen. <laughs> welcome. Go ahead. Charlene, welcome, Charlene. Okay, anybody else? Okay. Another one over there? Did I miss somebody? Welcome. Amen. Welcome to the family. And you know what? Um, can we have someone do that? We don't have um, our women's phone list. Can we have someone that put the, um, yeah, uh, she's not here. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, any newcomers or visitors, if you would like someone to reach out to you, as we understand how hard it is to pick up that 1,000 pound foam, you can simply fill out the top portion of the cards on the table, or you can check in at the GCCC app. Um, you could scan the QR code on the table. It'll take you right there. Um, and, uh, simply just you open it and just click the chain breakers button. You just have to put your name in one time. Um, this is not a necessity. We respect your decision to be anonymous. Um, what this does, it helps us to serve you and minister to you um, better through uh, the ministry of prayer. We know here that prayer is not our last defense. It's our first uh, defense, and the best uh, offense is a good defense, right? Um, so we would love to be able to pray for you. We have a prayer warriors group, um, small group of confidential people, um, and we will be praying for you by name throughout the week. Um, and, and corporately, we do that on a prayer call as well. So all you got to do is push a button to receive prayer. So please let us um, pray over you. Um, let's see here. You can also come to the next steps table that's in the back uh, through those doors there to receive prayer tonight before you leave here. Um, if you've come in here with a burden, um, we want to pray for you tonight. So uh, please allow us to do that. Um, if you would like prayer, you can see uh, Jojo or myself will be at the back um, after the meeting. Also, for our first-time uh, visitors, um, we'd love to give you a free gift. If you want to bring that connection card in, uh, we have a Chainbreakers Cup to thank you for joining us. Um, let's see here. If you want to get involved, 
Um, I don't know that we have a, the paper commitment sheet. Where's Chuck? Chuck, do we have the paper commitment sheet or no? If you if you would like a commitment, we do have. You could just see Chuck. If anyone say hi, Chuck. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, see Chuck if you would like a commitment we do have uh, quite a few open commitments that we need to get filled um, uh, let's see here so if you want to get involved you can uh, see him after the meeting and you know what we say here at chain breakers if you don't want to get involved get involved anyway all right um, with your home group members please raise your hands and keep them up for a moment home group thank you for your service all right um, let's see here. Uh, additional ministry announcements. Um, there's some fellowship announcements. Oh, do we have them on the tables? No, that's all right. We'll find them and put them out. Um, the most upcoming, we try to do a fellowship uh, once a month um, just so everyone can get connected. And, you know, we're a community here and we want you to um, feel that you are seen, heard, and that you matter because you do. Um, we care about relationships because God cares about relationships. Um, so much so that he let his son die so he could have a relationship with you. So we have a, um, a, a beach day coming up. If you want to join us, um, we're going to be on 48th Street in Sea Isle on Friday, July 5th. Um, so we would love for you to join us. Um, finally, last big, uh, big shout out to our global family watching online. Feel free to put it in the chat where you're watching from. And if you're new, so we can uh, welcome you. Um, my name is Angelina, and I am a recovered, redeemed, and delivered addict and alcoholic. You got your thing? Okay, good girl. Um, so it is my great pleasure uh, tonight um, to introduce Sheena. Um, I had the privilege and honor of seeing her first come into the rooms. Um, you know, and we saw she kind of had like this hard, hard outside, you know, like she was tough and didn't want to talk to anybody. Um, and as I've gotten to know her, you know, she's just the sweetest, most loving person, you know, and I think sometimes we got to put those fronts on because we're protecting ourselves because we've been through a lot of pain, hurt, and trauma. Um, so if you're in this room um, and, and you've been through something like that, we want you to know we've been where you've been. Um, but the more important thing is that we know the way out and that you don't have to feel that way anymore. Um, so it has been a true honor, um, one, to call you my friend and uh, to see her growth, if you guys would have seen um, her when she first came in, to now, it's, it's remarkable, actually. Um, and I'm just so proud of you. And, you know, and she's been through some stuff. She'll, I'm sure she'll talk about it in recovery. And she still stands here sober. Um, and so I'm so proud of her. Um, so it is my great honor and privilege to um, present Chena with her one-year tag here at Team Breakers. <laughs> So with that, let's kick it up one notch because I know we're rowdy here, this group. I know where we used to be. Give me a big chain breaker welcome for uh, Tina's testimony. Yeah. <laughs> Floor is your girl. I'm Tina and I'm an addict. Hey, Tina. One year. <laughs> I'm not supposed to be crying right now, but I am. And the person you see today, a year ago, I was not this at all, not even close at all. The skinniest person you probably could think of probably wasn't skinnier than me. My hair was falling out. There was nothing I would not do for another bag. Mm. Another bag. Nothing. Stand outside in the blistering sun. Some poisoning peeling. Didn't care. Walk miles. Miles. I can't walk around the block right now. <laughs> for real. But there was nothing I wouldn't do. Nothing. My childhood was terrible, terrible, terrible. My mom, she was there, but she was a full-blown addict. I 
me and my brothers, we had to stick together to survive. I was 14 years old, dating men that were double that to make sure that we ate, that we had a ride to school. I was dating a cab driver just to make sure, thank you, that we got to school. I always was like, I'm never going to be my mom. I'm never going to be my mom. I was had to started off with pills. I had cancer. Somebody that was close to me, family, gave me pills. Then she stole them. Then she told me that she was giving me crushed up perks. For nine days, she told me she was giving me perks and the whole time it was heroin. Didn't even know I was doing heroin. Just didn't want to feel like crap after going radiation. So then I started selling drugs because I had no way to get that heroin. I started selling drugs. I put all the money I had in my savings into a drug set. What am I doing? Thought I was cool. All right, I'm going to sell drugs to, to support my habit. Thinking back now, I was dumb. Because what happened, I caught a charge. I get locked up. I come back. Now I don't have no money, no drugs, but I'm still withdrawing. So I'm at my friend's house, and they're all smoking crack. And they're like, if you want to feel better, Chena, just smoke this. It'll numb you until they come back with the, um, what you want. I did it. The dumbest mistake I could ever make, besides the first one. Now I have two habits. Mm. Two. And they, didn't, they don't tell you that when you smoke. It sucks everything out of you that's already in there. So now you need both of them. So now I'm doing more D than I was before because I was only doing it so I wasn't sick. Like I thought I was self-medicating myself. Oh, I'm not shooting it. I'm not, I'm not uh, doing nothing but sniffing it. I'm okay. No, I wasn't. I joke about being like a lollipop, but that really was me. That really was me. I really was a lollipop, y'all. I really was. I would have to go to Walmart to the children's section to fit clothes. That's pathetic. Grown woman wearing kids clothes. And it's not, it wasn't because I was made like that. I wasn't tiny. I've never been tiny. But it was the choices that I made. Then I'm walking the street to Camden, doing whatever I could, panhandling. And then it wasn't enough anymore. I started selling my body for drugs. That's my nephew. Is it really? Oh. Yeah. It's my baby right there. Selling my drugs for, selling my body for drugs. That's the lowest you can get. That's the most disrespectful thing that you can do to yourself. Degrading. It's disgusting, disgusting. And I did it. I can't, there's not many things I can say that I didn't do. And that's pathetic to me. It's sad. So I went to rehab, and I had the best counselor in the whole world. She supported me. 
She made me feel like I was wanted, I was needed, my opinion mattered, gave me a great plan. I had everything set in stone, I was gonna do good. I was clean for a year. This person never left my life either. Always been, always been. But I chose to go back out. Got into a fight with a family member, was homeless, went back out. After a year hanging out with the wrong people, you know what they say? Go to the barbershop long enough, you get a haircut. And that's exactly what I did. And this relapse was bad. Bad, 10 times worse than anything that I ever could have thought I would do. Worse. The worst. I hated myself. I hated everybody. I was, I was killing myself. Absolutely killing myself and I didn't care because I thought nobody wanted me and I felt like I was an unwanted child again. Abandonment issues all over again. Felt like nobody cared. If they did, they'd be looking for me. But little did I know they were. You just can't catch me, I'm like a roach. <laughs> Turn the lights on, I'm gone. <laughs> Under the refrigerator somewhere. It's hard for me to think about everything that I did. It's crazy, because Angeline was like, just let God work with you. You'll, he'll tell you what to say. I had planned this whole story I went over it with my people in IOP. No tears came. But to see everybody here supporting me, that's people right. that don't come here came here tonight. That's right. That's why I'm crying. Because I don't mm. I love you too, y'all. Nobody could ever tell me that anybody that ever used anything is a bad person because I've met some of the mm. best people in my whole entire life <laughs> in these rooms. Everybody that failed, everybody that was neglected, mm. abused, sexually, mentally, emotionally, that are in these rooms are just like me. Just like me. And they're some of the best people I've ever met. Morals on a thousand. Lawyers, doctors. I'm no different than them. They're no different than me. Doesn't matter what life walk you took. It doesn't. Because we all get wrapped up in addiction. I'm just happy that we're all out of it. I was driving through Camden this week and it was disgusting, the things I was seeing. And I would have been standing there right with them if it wasn't for my counselor in Maryville. If it wasn't for my new counselor at Maryville. These people left imprints on me that cannot be replaced. And even when I was messed up and getting high, I still thought about it, what they would say to me. How would they feel if they saw me? How I would hurt them? And the way here, I'm like, I'm not even nervous. I'm telling Carly, like, I'm not even nervous. I'm good. And then I get here and I start crying mm. because even though I'm clean, life is still showing up. It's still showing up. Everybody knows I got a bad attitude. Don't mess with me. We're working on it. Right. We're working on it. Pray with me. Don't play with me. <laughs> That's my little big brother. <laughs> like, it's still showing up. I went through like two of the hardest things in my life. Like, I wasn't gonna talk about this, but I had to, it was laying on my heart. A 
awkward because she brought me here. I came here with Tamora the first time and I met her. And I asked her to be my sponsor the next day because just something about her radiated sobriety and bringing me closer to God and just everything about her. I don't regret having her in my life at all, but it took me talking to another person to point out everything that she did do when she was with me. A season and a reason, and she was my season, but it's okay because I still love her and maybe one day I'll be able to put my pride aside and talk to her. I hope I am. I hope I can. Do I pray for her? Yes. Then my dad passing, that was un ungodly. Like, I don't even know what was going on. It was a mess. I was a mess. I couldn't function. I was crying, calling my brother on the phone, freaking out. Like, I'm pretty sure I stressed him out. I'm not perfect. I still have my ways. I still will cuss you out and then tell you I love you. <laughs> I'm trying though, and I'm not gonna give up. I'm not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's so many reasons why I should, but there's a thousand why I shouldn't. Mm -hmm. I try every day to turn the cheek. Sometimes it don't work, sometimes it does, but I know that God's got me. And as long as I have God, I'm good. I'm good. I don't care about nothing yep. else, no more. But a year ago, I couldn't say that. Mm -hmm. Like I was saying before, when the, the way I break it down to people to make them understand why I didn't believe in God was when you're born, you're supposed to have unconditional love from your parent. And you're promised that. So when somebody would tell me, Oh, God's going to give you unconditional love. I compared them to my parents. Mm. And when I, what I didn't get from my parents, I thought, mm, I'm not going to get from God. All the heartbreak, all the abandonment issues, self-esteem, all that, that that was messed up from my parents, I didn't think God could ever get me out of that. And I thought I was going to get the same thing from him because your promise unconditional, everything. So for a long time, I rejected God just like I reject my parents. Just like I rejected everything about my mother. Everything. I didn't want to be her. I didn't want to do the things she did. I wasn't going to be the mother she was. But I let God in. And it changed my life. It changed my life. Going to that sober house I was just in, changed my life. If mm -hmm. I would have went home, if I would have went anywhere else, I wouldn't have had mm -hmm. the accountability that I had there. Sober houses save lives. Amen. Seriously. Yeah, they do. Seriously. Sober lives save, sober houses save lives. That's all my hashtags on Facebook right now. Sober houses save lives. Because if it wasn't for Shula, I don't know where I would be. I don't know where I would be. I think that I would be okay, but I probably wouldn't. I probably wouldn't. The relationships that I, I met, had there, I had a lot of uh, negative relationships there too as well. But the positivity and the accountability that you have, it's like you're living with your PO, for real. <laughs> it's like you're living with your probation officer. Random urines, you know what I mean? <laughs> Rant. I'm getting put on punishment on a contract because I got a slick mouth. It's like I'm, it's the parents or a PO. You can pick whichever one. You got it. Some of the best times I've ever had in my life, like memories that I will never forget, were in that house. We're in that house. We're in a sober house. I never thought I would say I made it in a sober house. I had every reason not to be in that sober house. And I could tell you. But when I finally gave in to somebody else's suggestions, 
I won. I'm here a year later because I didn't listen to myself. I didn't give in to my dumb ways and my dumb thoughts, thinking, thinking. You're not going to make it. You're going to beat them all up. You're going to go to jail. That's what I used to tell myself. No, I can't go. And I could, and I did. And I'm happy that I did. Because any other way, I don't know if I will be here to talk to y'all. I really don't. I wouldn't have had no inspiration. I wouldn't have this key tag. This key tag, like I'm putting this key tag next to my children. That's how happy this key tag makes me. Mm. The birth of my children and this key tag and God, for real. That's how important this is to me. That's how important sobriety is to me now. I don't think that I could be a normal functioning person without a meeting, without God, without chain breakers. Chain breakers, they bring something out of you that you didn't know you had. Mm. And it's not just the God stuff that brings you here. It's the, it's the personalities, it's the, it's the caring, the, un, it's, it's the un, oh God, I'm gonna cry. It's the undivided attention that you get when you talk to somebody here. Sober, life, sober um, houses save lives, but chain breakers does too. And we're all here because of it. I'm proud to say I'm a chain breaker. Mm. I really am, I'm proud to say I'm a chain breaker. I wear these shirts, I wear these badges, I collect these key tags with pride. Mm. Chain breakers saved me and help me get closer to God, which saved me for real. The sober house saved me and showed me this. Showed me the, the many, multiple different faces that I can call for any reason, any reason at all. If I stub my toe and it hurts and I wanna to talk to you about it, you're gonna listen. Because these people are some of the best people you'll ever meet in your life in these rooms. One year, I still can't believe it. One year. Thank you to everybody that's been in my life for this whole year. I appreciate y'all and I couldn't have done it without y'all. I love y'all and that's all I got. That's for you, girl. <laughs> um, you kind of left me speechless, uh, Chena. I love you dearly. I love you too. Um, there was a few things you said that kind of like really stuck out, you know, when you were talking about being, uh, you know, it doesn't matter what type of walk you came from, right? Addiction, uh, uh, it affects, right? Yell to jail. It don't matter color, race, creed, right? In the big book, it says that it's no respecter of persons. But the big, big book, the real big book, says that God is no respecter of persons. So while addiction may be able to affect everybody, so can Jesus. Mm -hmm. That affects everybody, but guess what? That solution can affect everybody too. And, uh, you know, when you're rocking with Jesus, you said, I started to win, right? I won. What some people don't realize is that when you're rocking with Jesus, you win. Because you win a fight, but the fight is fixed. And you're fixed to win. Because you're more than a conqueror. When the, when the overcomer, who is more than victorious, more than a victor, lives inside you, you're fixed to win. Don't mean that life's not going to show up. This woman next to me has been through a lot, a lot. 
and the fact that she's here right now. Um, you shared about your, your father um, passed a few weeks ago. And just a few days later, she had signed up to get baptized. And I'm like, doesn't she show up here a few days later? And that's God. That's God. And, um, you know, God's not willing that anyone should lose. Right? It says in the Bible, he wants everybody to be fixed to win. But we got a part to play in that. Right? And that, and that part is, like you said, is kind of laying down that sword and realize me fighting alone don't work. Me fighting alone is not working for me. But in the Bible, it says in, in 2 Chronicles, the battle does not belong to you. It belongs to the Lord. What's that mean? That means if it's bigger than me, if it's stronger than me, then it's not my fight to win. It's my fight to give to him who's going to beat it on my behalf. My part is to lay that sword down. And that's what Sheena did when she started coming in here. It was hard to lay my sword down because everybody knows my sword know. is my tongue. Sometimes she <laughs> want to pick it back up too. And I said, no, no. Yeah. Right. But uh, maybe you're sitting in this room tonight and you're just here to support. Someone invited you here. Um, and you have never made that decision to give your life to the one who has all power. All power, right? You said, like, we make this choice, right? And I did it again. Guess what? You're going to do it again. And you're going to do it again. Because the, the big book tells us that we have no defense against the first drink. The first. Because of the obsession of the mind. And we can't control where the mind goes. Right? It's like a vehicle. The, the, the vehicle doesn't get to say where it's going. If the driver says, we're going to the liquor store, you're going to the liquor store. The vehicle don't have no choice. If the driver says, we're going to Camden, that vehicle's going to Camden. We ain't got no choice. One of our brothers in here, he, sh he shares this, and it almost makes me cry every time he, he says it, that he was literally driving to Camden with tears streaming down his face because he didn't want to be doing it. What's that? That's a driving force that's stronger than me. There's a reason why they call, right, some alcohol, spirits. And that's because there is a spirit behind that. We got a real enemy. You have a real enemy. Even if you don't know you have a real enemy, he's happy you don't know he exists. We got a real enemy, and it takes a real power to defeat him. And so when we lay our lives down to Jesus, he fights that battle for us. He, he expels that obsession of the mind. I don't have a choice. It's going to be there. Right? And the only one who can change the science of our brain, because we need, if the, the, it centers in the mind, right? What's that mean? That means I need a new mind. Mm -hmm. Right? But when we give our lives to Christ, we've been in this study, right? That I have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ now. Mm -hmm. Right? So, so now I got a defense against that first one. Right? And the only one who can change the mind is the science of the creator behind it. So if you've been in this room, right, and you're here to support you, whatever, whoever brought you here, and you don't know the Lord, if you don't know Jesus, the Savior, and you feel like you, all you've been doing is losing, because there's been times in my life, even with a face on in here, I felt like all I was doing was losing. We want to give you the opportunity to make that decision right now. Right? It's in Hebrews, Jesus is known as the, the champion. He's the champion. Right? You want to be a heavyweight champion? That, that, that's only with Jesus can you do that. Because he is the champion. And when we receive him into our hearts, right, we are powerless. But, but God tells us the moment that we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior... He puts his Holy Spirit inside of us. And now, right, it says uh, in Acts that, that power fell upon them. 
So if lack of power is my dilemma, that means, that means I need some power. Mm-hmm. And that's what you get with Jesus. Yep. Look so, at my ear. That's, yeah, girl. Those <laughs> muscles. Them Jesus muscles, y'all. That's right. They're the best ones. Mm-hmm. So if you're sitting in here tonight and you, you feel like, you know, that's me. All I've been doing is losing. You know, and you talked about this was the greatest mistake. This was the, the greatest mistake. Mm-hmm. Um, well, God knew that we were going to make mistakes. We might be surprised by our mistakes. Sometimes that surprised me. Like, oh, what just came out of my mouth? Right? But God's not surprised. Mm-hmm. God's not mad at you. Right? He knew that we were going to make mistakes. That's why he gave us his son, Jesus. That's why he did that, right? He says, all have fallen short of the glory of God. He knows we're going to fall short. He knows we're going to fall short. But he loved us so much that he wanted a relationship with us. So he said, you know what? I'm going to fix that for them. And he let his son die on the cross so we could be forgiven and cleansed of those sins by his blood, by his stripes, you have been healed. So if you need healing tonight, If you feel like all you've been doing is losing, I think it's time you get a win under your belt. And that all begins with a decision. Victory begins with a decision. And that is the third step that we take to receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. At Chain Breakers, we believe the way to salvation. It's as easy as ABC. A, we just admit the truth about ourselves, that we're sinners, that we make mistakes. We all make mistakes. Mm -hmm. God knew it, and he's not surprised by it. That's why he sent him a son, and that's why we be, be, we believe. believe. We believe that God gave us a way out of the sin, a way out of the mistakes. Through his son Jesus, when he died on that cross and nailed your shame to it, mm. nailed your embarrassment through it, nailed your sin personally to that cross, so you could be forgiven. See, we commit. We commit our will and our lives over to his care and protection. And I always add the D in there. We do it today. Tomorrow is never promised. So we want to give you that opportunity to make that step right now. Because we want to help you get some wins. And it is possible. So I'm going to ask everyone if you could just bow your heads and close your eyes. And why don't we say it out loud to uh, give courage to perhaps somebody who's sitting in here tonight and doesn't know Jesus and is feeling a stretching happening in their heart. And if so, then that is God stretching you. He's trying to stretch your faith. He's trying to speak to you. He's trying to call you. He says, I stand at the door and knock whoever lets me in. Let him in. So I feel like he's knocking on the hearts of some people tonight. So if you would like to open the door and let the the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and the champion into your heart, just say something like this. Father in heaven, Father in heaven, thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. I admit to you, I admit to you that I am a sinner. That I'm a sinner. That I've made mistakes. That I've made mistakes. And I'm sorry. And I'm sorry. I believe. I believe you did something. You did something about all of my sins. About all of my sins and all of my mistakes. And all of my mistakes through your son Jesus. Through your son Jesus when he died on the cross. When he died on the cross. So I could be forgiven. So I could be forgiven. Jesus. Jesus. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. I give you my life. I give you my life. I receive you now. I receive you now. Be my Lord and Savior. And be my Lord and Savior. With your eyes still closed, please. Head still bowed. If you said that prayer with me tonight for the first time, would you please slip your hand up? There's no one looking but me. I just want to be able to pray for you. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand over there. Hallelujah. I see that hand right there. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Please keep those hands up just a moment. It's just me and um, two of our uh, Brothers in Christ here, we just want to be able to bring you a Bible to start you out on your walk with God. So keep those hands up just a moment, please. We thank you, God. I thank you, Jesus. Keep those hands up just a moment. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. I thank you for every single person who put their hand up tonight. I thank you, Lord, for every single person in this room. I thank you for everybody who's in here, clean and sober, Lord God, on the way to freedom. You say that that freedom be the portion for who the sun sets free is free indeed. So I just bless everybody in this room that's under the sound of my voice, that every chain of addiction, of brokenness, of bondage be broken now at the name of Jesus, Father God. I pray that uh, liberty and freedom be the portion of every single person in this room, Lord. We thank you. We thank you for calling these brothers and sisters that gave their lives to you tonight, Lord God. May they never be the same. May they know when they walk out these doors that they have encountered the true living God. And may their lives never be the same. We love you, Lord, and we bless your name. We give you thanks for what you've done for Chena, Lord God, and I give you thanks for what you have done and will do for each of my brothers and sisters here in this room. So we thank you. We love you. We give you the praise and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Um, Okay, guys. So thank you, um, our online audience who joined us tonight. we, we bless you in Jesus' name, and we just ask one thing before we shut the feet off to open the meeting up, um, that if this meeting blessed you in any way, that you would please pass that blessing along and share it with a friend. So we'll see you guys next week. Let's give one more hand to Tina.